Hey Leo, welcome. It's Meredith. I'm here with your August 2018 monthly reading. This is for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. And I invite you to watch your other signs as well. So for example, if you're Leo with Pisces moon and Scorpio rising and Libra Venus, you're going to want to watch each video so that you get a really full picture of the energies that you are working with through the month of August. So I am using the Tarot of Trees uh, deck again. I'm loving this little deck. I just got it. It's brand new, but um, it's super teeny tiny. Look, it's not even as big as... Well, it's a little bit bigger than my finger. <laughs> anyway, love the deck. It's super cute. Um, let's look at the bottom of the deck for you. Let's see what the theme is for the month. The High Priestess. Ooh, things we don't know that we discover the High Priestess. I always like seeing her card and then at the same time I feel a little wary when I see it. Um, this is water, moon energy. This is secrets and wisdom. Um, it's the spiritual world. It's hidden knowledge coming into our intuition, our psychic experience. It's having significant dreams. And it, it's indicative of a time of incubation and quiet, some privacy to go inward and deepen our relationship with our higher self. We're being asked to trust our, our inner knowing. Um, privacy and confidentiality are key when this card shows up. So if you happen to be nurturing a project or um, a new relationship, you may not want to be sharing details with other people. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, some things need to be kept not so much secret, but sacred. That's what I want to say. Um, that's what my intuition tells me. Connect with your guides and angels. Have quiet time at home. Um, relationships may be very calm when this card is around, but you're, the, but you're not necessarily in deep connection with a lot of other people. You're all focused on your own lives, uh, which is fine and good. Um, again, it's a message of keeping personal details personal. Just keep that in mind. So let's say, you know, we've had a lot of messages through July um, about the divine and cosmic gift of new beloved relationships. And there are aspects to these relationships that you know, in the past, we might have shared with our best friend, but in the now, we must keep an eye on what is sacred between you and your beloved and, and keep that to yourselves and really celebrate yourselves because this is um, part of what builds your foundation as a couple, uh, knowing you can trust one another. All right, so I'm doing the reading a little different this month uh, from last month. Um, I've pulled cards for each week of the month. Of August. So for the first week, our first card is the King of Wands. You know, with the High Priestess right there, this for me backs up what I was just saying. If, if that king is representative of your partner, you definitely want to keep your, your sacred personal details just that, sacred and personal. Share them with each other. Celebrate them with each other and let that build your foundation. But specifically, the King of Wands is air and fire, and there's Cancer and Leo energy here. Leo for the Leo. Um, this King, he's an honorable man. Um, and you can see this as masculine or feminine, but I'm sticking with the masculine just because he's a, he's a king. Um, and the kings and queens are all about self-mastery. So the areas of self-mastery on this King have to do with one's honor um, this is a person who is like a man or woman of the world, well-traveled and experienced, talkative, energetic, self-motivated, usually self-employed, has very high standards for him or herself and others in their lives, but they're exceptionally courteous, considerate, um, very true to their values, moral code, and integrity. These people are open and exceptionally self-aware, which, again, if this is a beloved relationship, that's what you want. Someone who's emotionally and um, spiritually self-aware, respectful of themselves and you. 
very passionate as a partner and communicative. Um, this is a good time to make plans too on this card. It's, it's a good time to express desires and intentions and in some situations, you're being guided to be the leader. You know, there's Leo energy on this card. Leos are natural leaders. Um, but sometimes their confidence takes a hit. And we're being asked to push through that. To draw on our inner wisdom in the High Priestess. And push through um, our reservations for initiating things. And trusting that whatever we initiate will be supported and appreciated. appreciated. Next card. So this is the first week of August, as I said, and we have the moon. Now, take a look here. We've got the High Priestess, which is a moon energy card, and then we have the moon. And look how similar these moons are. They're both in new moon position, which is really cool. So that's about beginnings. I like seeing that. However, it means that we're not seeing the whole picture right now. And we really do need to rely on our, our intuition our inner knowing, our clairvoyance, our psychic energies. Uh, and we need to trust those. This is water, Pisces energy. Dreams are strong around this time, and we have that on the High Priestess as well. So pay attention to your dreams. There's, um, We're cutting through illusion with our intuition, with our, our psychic gifts, whatever they may be. There's compassion, soulful wisdom here, vulnerability. Some of us may be dealing with a private struggle. Um, the moon will reveal that. And remember, this is borrowed light of the sun, and it casts a whole different um, glow on the world, and it allows us to see things from a different perspective. So in our ability to see things from a different perspective, we can, we can use that. We can apply our empathic gifts to the alternate perspective and gain wisdom and knowledge. Let's look at our second week of August. Oh, look at this. Ten of Cups, dream fulfillment, goal fulfillment. That's a beauty right there. This is, this is something that we're all on right now. <laughs> we're on that Ten of Cups. We're all after it. We are about fulfillment. Tens are about the fulfillment of a cycle. Specifically, the Ten of Cups is dreams coming true, reward for effort. Um, this is water. It's Mars and Pisces. There's an energy of prosperity and joy, contentment. It's um, living the benefits of love. I love that. That's from my guides and angels. You know, really um, celebrating living through the benefits of loving and being loved. Let's see what goes with it. The Nine of Wands. Some of us have worked very hard for that. So if 10 is a completion, 9 is close to completion. The Nine of Wands in particular, it's fire, it's moon in Sagittarius, it's defense and strength. And it's holding a very strong position, but it's indicative of people who have endured heavy challenges to get where they are by being vigilant and, and genius and using their energy wisely so as not to become exhausted from it. You know, the next card in that suit is the ten, which is usually a person underneath, you know, ten burning wands, like saying, that's it, I've had enough total overwhelm, can't do this anymore. We're not there. <laughs> We're here. We're in the ten of cups, but we... We've genuinely earned that Ten of Cups, Leo. We've worked hard for it, um, which means that our dedication to our own spiritual growth has been intense. And um, this is a message that for those of us who've not quite um, stepped fully into the Ten, like they're nearly there, um, this is a reminder to trust your resources and avoid overexertion. Don't push right now. Don't push. Have the grit to go the distance, but don't push or force things at this time. 
It's also a message of being mindful of the inner dialogue. So the second week of August, you could be challenged with that. Um, your inner dialogue could be uh, somewhat on the fearful side. And that needs love so that you can release and heal it. And, and also trusting that whatever you do will be met with appreciation and support. That's a, that's a double message. Uh, we have that in the, the king. Um, I think it was in the king. Yes. You may need to be the leader and the initiator, but, initiator, but you will be appreciated and supported for your effort. But again, find the balance. Don't push here. Pay attention to your dreams. Listen to your intuition. Let's look at the third week. Another ten. Ten of Pentacles. Leo, come on, you got it going on. You are bringing a lot of things to fulfillment, and it has taken a lot of energy and endurance to get there. And um, so some things are fulfilling now. Some things are nearly fulfilled here. I want to see what goes with this ten. The sun. Oh, your planet. Sweet, sweet Leo. You have so much support. Okay, Ten of Pentacles. What do we want to say about that, guides and angels? That's Earth. It's Mercury and Virgo. There's prosperity. Um, family energy here. Also the energy of inheritance, property. Um, so for some people, the there's... Um, Maybe there's some discussion going on about um, family property or maybe it's something of your own property. Maybe you're working on an estate or a trust type of situation. Um, so that could be coming up. That, that would be specific to a percentage of you. Um, the other messages of the Ten of Pentacles is being in a loving relationship, having a prosperous home, blessings overflowing into your lives, um, happiness, stable emotions, stable finances, strong foundations, generosity, um, wealth in relationships, and not just financial either. You know, it's a wealth of love. It's a wealth of compassion, understanding, joy, kindness, freedom. That's all there in the relationships. And I want to I want to just add here that all through July, we had received messages in the dailies about um, the divine and cosmic gift of beloved relationships here. Some of us have rekindled relationships with friends. Some of you have been rekindling um, your, your beloved relationship within your marriages or um, commitments there. Um, I've heard from a lot of people who really felt that their relationships were over and somehow they have resurrected them, <laughs> you know, to their surprise and delight. And that's wonderful. And then the bulk of people I've spoken to are in new relationships. And um, uh, just a moment. I, um, my guides are interrupting me. Yes, wealth and relationship. Oh, they're reminding me just to stay on task. Thank you very much. <laughs> So there's a wealth of new frequency here for us to celebrate in these new relationships, which are repetitive messages throughout the entire month of July. Um, so check out some of the dailies there and see that. But these these beloved relationships have been on offer to us as a cosmic divine gift, and um, that's pretty exciting. And they're definitely, in this reading here for you, Leo, there's a lot of... Um, energy leaning into that taking root or it has taken root and you're beginning to celebrate the joys of it and you worked really hard for it Leo really hard but I do love seeing your planet the sun in your reading bringing all this happiness so that's fire obviously it's success good health it's awakening your higher uh, levels of consciousness uniting your spirit with the spirit of the world uh, there's happiness. It's one of the happiest cards of the tarot. There's sanctuary here, which connects me back to the high priestess. For those of you in these new beloved relationships, as I said, there are sacred um, experiences here, and they are not meant to be shared with anyone but your beloved. So keep the sanctuary of your beloved relationships sacred. Super important. 
that, you know, oversharing with someone else outside of the beloved relationship um, may upset your partner. So really consider their feelings before you discuss them with anyone. The sun means every aspect of your life is improving. Yeah. Okay. Let's see your fourth week of August. First card, two of wands. Nice. Nice. Okay, that's fire. It's Mars and Aries. That's a good part, uh, pairing right there, Mars and Aries. They go together. Um, but the two of wands is making plans, um, moving forward. It could be travel for some. Could be vacation for some of you too. Um, the sun is also about going on holiday, so uh, it, it's possible there's there's a relationship there. Um, my guides always say that this is stepping through a doorway into a new realm of life experience. I do believe that's true. Here you have these tens. You have the sun. There's been you know, numerous messages about the relationships. So definitely we're walking through new doorways here into life experience. That's exciting. It, it feels adventurous. Um, also a message on the two of wands is that a new romantic relationship has developed. Um, there's a lot of spiritual connection to self and um, this card is always an invitation to connect with nature and um, a message that we are to make the most of what's on our offer to us. Our star is rising and great opportunities are presenting. Let's see the card that goes with that. Four of Swords. Relax. Just relax, Leo. <laughs> That's a good one to have because, you know, the nine would have you, you know, digging in, looking for that grit to endure. And you're, you're not necessarily having to endure so much now. You can relax a little. Take your foot off the gas a bit and coast. Um, this is air. It's Jupiter and Libra. So there's um, good fortune and balance in this card. It's rest and quiet time. It's passive energy. Um, it's recovering from stress. Hello, Nine of Wands. Um, stability, balance. It's gentle har harmony for the warrior, too. In traditional tarot, we usually see a knight lying down with the four swords nearby, and it indicates a pause between battles. <laughs> um, so that's why we say gentle harmony for gentle rest for the warrior. Um, this is a card of contemplation, sanctuary. Sanctuary shows up again. We have that in the sun. So, again, relax with your beloved. And keep your personal details sacred. Put that in your chill box. <laughs> I don't know what that really means exactly. But that's what my guides just said. So I'm repeating them. Oh, that's funny. Alright, do I want to re... Um, no, do I want to clarify anything here? I do, actually. I want to clar clarify a little bit on the High Priestess. What are the secrets there? What is... Um, can we have some insight, please, on the secret of the High Priestess? I'm using Chuck Spezzano's Love Pack to clarify. I just find these cards um, really helpful. Ooh, this is interesting. Being naive. So we might not have some details um, that we would find helpful. You know, and in this card it looks a little bit like betrayal. Hmm. Okay, so that's still some mystery. Could we have a little more clarification on that, please? What does the High Priestess want us to know? Okay. Fear of inadequacy. My guides tell me to watch for this in our own selves and then within our beloveds and to bring love to that. Bring love, not judgment. 
not fear, not control, not anger, love. This requires compassion. The high priestess would want us to, to handle this with compassion from our own heart space for ourselves. So this may be coming up as a result of entering into these new relationships or rekindling relationships. Some of us are fearful of, of experiences of the past, um, you know, having the power to make the now difficult. And that's a choice. That's a free will choice. We only have the now. We don't have to live our past again. But however, we may discover that we get triggered and we fear betrayal or or our naive energy comes up and we, we think things are looking that way. We have to keep our vision, our inner sight clear and understand that the vulture thoughts that circle us from our wounded ego really needs love not not this negative inner dialogue so if you're noticing it in yourself or if you notice it in your beloved this is a time for conversation with compassion and love kindness healing okay two more cards fell out um so again this is all for the high priestess i get truth yeah discuss the truth that's a message that's come up over and over through July, even the end of June, this was coming up for us. And it was um, how the frequency is of our beloved relationships is unlike any other we've ever had. And there is room here for um, pure self-expression. So speak your truth, receive the truth from your, your beloved as well, and discuss these things in compassion and they settle out real easy so let's try not to react in an old way let's respond in this loving nurturing compassionate understanding frequency that is available and on offer to us let's pay attention to our intuition if we feel it discuss it don't allow it to fester and then I got falling in love and this is how we deepen our love to to our beloveds you know we trust we trust the process of discovering truth and when we bring our vulnerability courageously to the table we are able to discuss that work through it heal it love it move on and then your bond as a couple is even stronger for having discussed it now i want to clarify the moon for us leo because the moon is about more illusion and dreams, um, secrets, things we don't necessarily know, seeing things from a different perspective. What more can we know about the moon card? I've got cards on the floor. It's awesome. I love when they do that. I feel like they pick us. Mistake. Yeah. We're afraid of repeating past mistakes. It's okay. Your past is your past. You can't erase it. You get to do it different in the now, though. If you feel the fear, talk about it like I just said. Have compassion for yourself. Do the healing work. Move on. Because what you're fearing are old wounds. Anything that shows up, love that. Talk about it with your beloved or someone else that you know, love, and trust. And work your way through it. Because the vulnerability is giving of yourself to another. That does feel like a risk. It's worth doing, though. Because who you are is amazing and beautiful. And you have so much to offer yourself and your beloved relationships and your family and your friends. So give. Give all day long. You'll be supported. You'll be appreciated. That was a repetitive message in this reading. You're stepping through a new, new doorway into a new realm of life experience where this is the way. <laughs> and then the last card that fell out was, I love this card, it cracks me up, the erotic. Yeah, connect in your heart space to yourself and then bring that to your beloved and build on your foundation of intimacy. Trust that. 
Well, I just looked at the bottom of the deck. Look what I got. Joy. I got. We got. We got joy, people. The sun. All right, I'm going to move on now to the Doreen Virtue Angel Answer Cards. This is your, just like we do in the dailies, this is your opportunity, Leo, to ask a question, related or not. I will, at the very least, choose three. Sometimes we get more. Oh, here we go. Not the right time. I'm going to put that with the Nine of Wands. It is not the right time to push, to force. You do not have to dig so deep for grit. It's all right there at the surface. You have these tens. You're near completion. You have the sun. You have your inner wisdom. You have all of your empathic gifts available to you. You can relax a little bit. So it's not the right time to be pushing. Being forceful. Allow yourself to receive, Leo. You're excellent leaders. You really do lead the charge every time, but there is a time for you to relax and receive what's on offer. You don't always have to work so hard. You have such brave and loyal hearts, and you can't help your enthusiasm, but uh, make sure you balance that harmoniously. It's time to receive, Leo. Next card. Seems to be the theme. Communicate clearly. That's showing up over here and definitely over here. High Priestess, the moon. Definitely communicate clearly, most especially in your beloved relationships. It is imperative. Don't sit on it. It's not an egg. It will not hatch. <laughs> Just talk about it. Be courageous. Put it out there. Last card. Trust. Trust the journey, Leo. You're doing great. You're doing better than you know, and you're closer than you think to so many things. Um, relax. Trust. Communicate clearly. Don't push things. Let yourself receive. Think, oh, I was just going to end the reading, and then I forgot. <laughs> we need your affirmation card. I am using the Universe Has Your Back deck. What is the highest and greatest, most appropriate affirmation for Leo for the month of August? Hmm. In every moment, the universe is conspiring to bring me toward right-minded thinking and the energy of love. How sweet is that? Right on. I love it. Leo, thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I invite you to watch your Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus videos as well. There's a lot of information there, so you can get a really full picture of the month of August for yourself. If you would like to book a private reading, you can do that in the description box below. I will be back again for September monthlies, but you can also check me out in the daily readings. Peace to you, Leo. Have a beautiful month and happy birthday to you. <laughs> Bye for now.